Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE Chemistry Revision video. Today we're covering the topic of metals, and these are a couple of key points that the syllabus wants you to be able to understand. We're not going through metal extraction. Uh, if you want to know more about that, go to my website, www.freeexamacademy.com. I've covered that in detail there, but otherwise in this video we'll be covering all of these things here. So the physical properties of metals are usually that it's quite shiny, uh, they're really good conductors of heat and electricity, they're usually fairly, uh, in, uh, they're high in density, they're malleable and ductile due to the nice lattice arrangement of the cations and the metallic structure, uh, usually solid in room temperature and they're sonorous, uh, suggesting that they make bell-like sounds when struck. In terms of the chemical properties, they have the chemical, um, the, the classic metal plus acid reactions, um, and we've covered this in the acids and bases topic, uh, but ultimately you get uh, the salt and hydrogen when you add them together. Uh, metals will react with oxygen to produce the metal oxide, and metals will also react with water. Now depending on the reactivity of the metals, uh, they can either react with cold water like sodium and potassium, they're fairly reactive metals, and you get the metal hydroxide salt along with the hydrogen. Uh, but uh, other metals such as zinc are less reactive, they don't react in cold water, but they do react in steam. And so if you were to add a metal plus steam, you'd get the metal oxide with hydrogen. Alloys are basically a mixture of two or more metals, or a mixture of one or more metals with a non-metal. Sorry, this is meant to be non-metal. Um, and so alloys are harder than pure metals, and the reason for that is because in, a, in, in an alloy, you have different sized atoms, and that will make the layers of the metallic structure less mobile, and therefore preventing them from slipping. Uh, so, this is basically a diagrammatic representation of what an alloy might look like. You can see that there are various uh, different atoms going on here, and the structure is obviously a bit less re uh, less regular than a normal metallic lattice, and uh, therefore the alloy is harder in structure than a pure metal. A br so there are a couple of examples. Uh, brass is a mixture of zinc and copper. A mild steel is a mixture of iron uh, with a small amount of carbon, and stainless steel is a mixture of iron, nickel, and chromium. So one of the key uh, topics of this uh, this uh, part of the syllabus is the reactivity series, uh, which is basically a list that lists uh, well that orders metals from the most reactive to least least reactive, and you've got carbon and hydrogen in here as well. They're obviously not metals, but they're included in this list. So uh, we need to think about what is reactivity. So, especially when we talk about metals, reactivity is dictated by a metal's tendency to become ions or cations, right? So the more reactive an met a metal is, the greater the tendency the metal has uh, to form metallic ions, right? So basically what this means is, for example, potassium, which is high, the highest on the list, has a higher tendency to form uh, potassium ions than, say, calcium, and so forth. Right, so this becomes a bit more apparently uh, important later on when we talk about displacement reactions and things like that, but for now we'll move on. And uh, so now that we know that there's obviously variations in reactivities amongst uh, metals, you can actually sort of take a, you can look at the reactions of all of these metals with uh, certain things like water, dilute hydrochloric acid, and uh, potential reduction of the metallic oxide with carbon to deem which metals are more reactive than the other. So there's obviously a strict pattern here. So potassium and sodium, they're quite reactive and they react violently with cold water, whereas as you go down the list, uh, the reaction becomes uh, more dilute. So calcium reacts uh, fairly quickly with cold water, but not vigorously. Uh, magnesium has a fairly slow reaction in cold water. And uh, zinc and iron, they don't react with cold water at all, but they do react with the steam. Um, and the copper metal doesn't actually react with steam or water, uh, cold water, suggesting that it is the least reactive amongst all of the metals that we took a look at before. Uh, we can also follow. We can also sort of figure out the same pattern when we take a look at the reactions of these metals with dilute hydrochloric acid. Um, whereby the 
potassium and sodium, they are fairly explosive and, you know, dangerous even. Um, and the reactions become less and less vigorous as we go down the list. Um, of course, this is the full list of metals in the reactivity series, but for your sake, you really only need to know these um, metals that we've been, uh, that's been listed on this table here. Uh, the third column is the reduction of the metal oxide with carbon. So this is suggesting that potassium, sodium, and calcium oxides cannot be reduced with carbon. Uh, whereas zinc, iron, and copper oxides can be reduced by uh, heating with carbon. And we'll take a look at this in a bit more detail because it can be fairly confusing. Um, but ultimately, the fact that these uh, metal oxides down below can be reduced by carbon is suggestive of the fact that they are less reactive than the metals above. Okay, so if we take a look at that in a bit more detail, right? So this is the reaction between zinc um, oxide and carbon. So when you heat them together, uh, zinc oxide becomes zinc the element, and uh, carbon basically steals the oxygen from zinc oxide to form carbon dioxide. So ultimately what's happened is zinc oxide loses an oxygen to carbon, therefore it's been reduced, because reduction is the loss of oxygen. That's one of the, uh, one of the definitions, right? Um, so this is only possible because zinc is lower in the reactivity series than carbon. So basically carbon is more reactive than zinc. And remember, so Zinc being a fairly low uh, metal of low reactivity suggests that zinc would much uh, prefer to be in the elemental form rather than the the ionic form because it has a fairly low tendency to form ions. So basically, that 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 shows that uh, because carbon is higher on the reactivity series than zinc, it has the capability to uh, reduce zinc oxide. Okay, um, so if we were to sort of narrow it down and, um, you know, put it into simple terms, carbon can only reduce the oxides of metals that are less reactive than itself or below it on the reactivity series. So if we take a look at the reactivity series here, everything below carbon here, um, all of these metal oxides can be reduced uh, by carbon, uh, whereas all the oxides above carbon cannot be reduced. Okay, um, so <clears throat> that's just why that, uh, that that is why in this table, uh, if you look at the uh, the zinc oxide, iron oxide, and the copper oxide, these can be reduced by carbon, therefore suggesting that it is uh, these metals are less reactive than the metals above it. So uh, talking about the reactivity series, another really important concept to learn is displa displacement reactions, which basically involved one iron replacing another in the reaction. So whether or not a metal can displace another metal that exists in a compound is strictly dependent on their relative reactivities. For example, if you add zinc to copper sulfate, what you'll find is that you actually get an end result of zinc sulfate with copper. So let's look carefully at what's actually happened. Zinc has become a zinc ion because it was an elemental form on the left hand side but now it's in an ionic form combined with sulfate so therefore it is a zinc ion. Uh, whereas copper sulfate, um, and the, the copper ions and copper sulfate has actually transformed into the elemental form like so. Okay, so basically zinc has replaced copper and copper sulfate and this was possible because zinc is more reactive than copper. And again, reactivity wise, zinc has a higher tendency to become an iron. Okay, so zinc would much rather prefer to be an iron in this scenario, and copper, which would, uh, will much prefer to become uh, an elemental metal rather than an iron. So therefore, they swap places because it's a win win situation. Uh, whereas, if you had zinc, added to magnesium chloride, magnesium is perfectly happy where it is at the moment because it's more reactive than zinc and it has a higher tendency to remain in ionic form so it will remain there so therefore you won't get any reaction at, at all. So basically uh, if we were to sum it up, a metal can displace another metal in a compound only if 
it is more reactive or higher up in the reactivity series. Zinc is higher up than copper in the reactivity series, therefore they swap places here. Zinc is not higher than magnesium, and so you don't get any sort of displacement reaction happening in this scenario. So, um, let's take a look at something called decomposition. This isn't exactly to do with um, the reactivity series, but one thing to note is uh, basically the higher up um, a metal is in the reactivity series, for example, potassium, when they form a compound, the compound is a lot more stable than, say, uh, a metal compound of a lower reactivity. So, say, uh, magnesium chloride, a magnesium chloride molecule is more stable than, say, zinc chloride, okay? But ultimately, decomposition reactions occurs when one reactant breaks down into two or more products, and there are three main uh, compounds that you need to sort of um, memorize in terms of de decomposition. So first of all is the metal hydroxide. A metal hydroxide, uh, when you heat it up, um, it'll decompose into the metal oxide and water, just like this example here. A metal nitrate will decompose um, into, into the nitrite and the oxygen if it's a sodium or potassium nitrate. Okay, so the more reactive nitrate, in this example sodium or potassium nitrates, will form the nitrite, um, which is the NO2 uh, salt, uh, with oxygen. Every other nitrate that are not sodium or potassium nitrates will actually form the metal oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen, like this example here. So this is just something that you'll have to memorize. Uh, metal carbonates, fairly easy, they heat up, uh, they, they decompose into the metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So as long as you know what's formed, you just uh, sort of write it out and then you balance the equation later. So that's it for today guys, uh, just go to my website www.freeexamacademy.com for more info. Uh, please like, share and subscribe and I just wanted to tell you guys that Patreon will be launching very very soon and uh, there will be some really really valuable exclusive content on there um, and I will be making a video on that separately in the near future uh, just to give you guys a heads up but otherwise um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.